Okay, this is a video about Monte Carlo simulation. I'm making some videos. I've made a bunch of them. I'm not putting them all on YouTube yet. <clears throat> and uh, somebody said to me, your Monte Carlo really sucks. And your mean reversion discussion really stinks. It was one of the worst pieces of crap I've ever seen. <laughs> And there was good feedback. It really was. I didn't watch the videos. I'm afraid to watch these. But it got me thinking, I really want to make some. Uh, 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 I've for years wanted to do this. Now, use of Monte Carlo in financial models. I'm, we can find selected things that they might be used for and they might be kind of interesting for but it's I, I, it, 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 it's it's pretty rare. I think what's what's almost more interesting is to really study and understand what mean reversion is, how mean reversion and volatility, the two big parameters, how they interplay. And you cannot use the same volatility. I'll show you in a minute for mean reverting series as a. As a, as, a, as a Brownian motion, a series with no mean reversion. Um, if you have mean reversion, the amount of DSCR, LLCR, debt to capital is so dramatically different than if you don't. Uh, understanding conceptually, in, in, in pure theory, no statistics, when you have risks of something going out of fashion, no mean reversion. If it falls down, it's going to fall down forever. If people are going to suck, they don't like, I don't know, Victoria's Secret anymore. Maybe they do, but Bed Bath & Beyond or something. They don't like it. It's gone out of fashion. It's never coming back. You're going to go bankrupt. Oil prices, weather. Uh, uh, these are mean reverting series. Uh, 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 stock prices are almost pure non-mean reverting series. And I want to understand, show you in this video, how this basic equation, we'll show you, we'll, we'll go through some just normal kind of, I, I said normal, for, we'll go through some uh, 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 regular kind of issues, okay? And we're going to do these simulations. And these simulations demonstrate that if you take the variance, if you have a non-reverting, this is a non-mean reverting series. I can't talk and type at the same time, obviously, anymore. And a, a non-mean reverting series, the variance increases... Uh, 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 with, with directly in proportion to time. So I'm going to show you that if you take the variance of a time series, and we'll talk about what I mean exactly, okay, here is the variance over one period. Uh, uh, this This is the variance over two periods. This is this is just volatility, if you want to call it that. Volatility squared, excuse me. If you take the square of the volatility, you can see that this is about double this. Not exactly, it's 1.96. This is about triple this. Not exactly, 2.98. This is about four times as much as this. If they don't mean revert, the 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 blah, 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 the the variance increases directly over time. Now I couldn't have proven this. I didn't know why. I read it in some statistical textbook, and what I'm going to tell you. Now I'm making other videos on big models, levelized cost of hydrogen, electricity, batteries, all that stuff. Um, um, blah, 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 uh, 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 a little more on electricity analysis, mainly on on, on complicated uh, uh, project finance issues associated with debt sizing. But this I also want to do. Okay, I'm, I, I've already made the videos. 
and I made a couple of uh, of these on on mean reversion. This fact that is as you go out, it's not exactly. I've done forty thousand simulations, and my there's one thing in common with all of these things. If you want to prove something these days, you can go and read a finance text. You can read a a, a statistical book like I used to do. And, and you get some formulas that for me, for you, maybe they're easy to understand. For me, they're almost meaningless. If you can do a Monte Carlo simulation and prove it to yourself, it's an entirely different matter. Now, if the variance increases directly with time, you can say that, first of all, that the standard deviation, which is indeed the volatility, if it's Brownian motion, if it's Brownian motion, in other words, if there is no mean reversion, this square root, the square root of time, the, the, the variance increases with the square root of time. So I'm going to show you how to do this. It's so exciting. It really is, and I'm not joking. Uh, 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 the making of 40,000 uh, 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 simulations. 40,000 simulations. How can we do that over time? So, so we're going to prove that the uh, uh, volatility uh, increases with the square root. Now, I remember in the, in the 1980s, it must have been, when somebody from the trading floor, floor was telling me about volatility and how, how what the formula for volatility was and I was so excited about it and I just wrote it down. You have to take the square root of the change in the price, the, the log, excuse me, the log of the change in the price or just the percent change in the price and you take the standard deviation of that over time. And then if you have, for example, daily observations and you have about 252 observations per year, that volatility will be very small from, from day to day. And you multiply it by the square root, the square root of 252. Now, now what I've done is I, I've put on the website, I've, I've, I've kind of put an explanation of these things. And most importantly, I've put a little uh, 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 a way you can do this uh, a simulation so you don't have to sit there and wait around for so long. Now, what I'm going to do here is, I haven't done it yet, we're going to do it together, and I'm going to show you how it works. We're going to put a mean reverting uh, series with 100% mean uh, reversion. Okay, and we're going to apply the same sorts of volatility estimates of this. And unless I'm really, really shocked, these things will not go up. If it's 100% mean reversion, uh, 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 these will, will, will stay the same. These will stay the same. Okay, now, uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, we, we, let's see. We'll write that down as we do it. And I'm going to show you how to run the macro to do this. And then I'm going to make a simulation for Alt E M and we'll create a copy and we'll uh, move this to the end. I hope is this. Uh, okay. And that's another 40,000 variables times God knows how many time periods. And it's taking a little time, especially since I've got the a recording thing on, and we'll call this simulation number four. And in simulation number four, we'll put mean reversion with 50% uh, uh, mean reversion. Now, here's, for, for me, this is the really big deal. When you look to see, well, I want to compute this famous mean reversion factor, this kind of autocorrelation factor. And when you look for how to compute it, you've got the augmented Dickey-Fuller test. And you're supposed to make a regression of this period, the change in this period against this period minus the, the, the last, uh, what is it? 
Well, well y is a change in y uh, times y minus one. That's what the change in y is. And then you're supposed to make it as a function of time, and you're supposed to check if b equals zero and all of this bullshit. Excuse me for saying that. If I want to really have a test whether something's mean reverting, I can do a simulation. And in my simulation, in, in, in my simulation, then I'm going to put a 50% mean reversion in here, and I'm going to let my simulation tell me, but in a, in, in a completely backwards way, if I have mean reversion here of 50% instead of 100%, uh, uh, what, <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, what is the, what happens to this, this relative increase in the volatility or the standard, or the, the variance or the volatility of standard deviation over time? And then I can look at at annual, I can look at daily uh, stock prices. I'm going to do that in another video. I've got other videos on temperature. and I'm, I really do, I, I hate to admit this, but I do kind of have fun with this with, with this stuff. And turn the video off if you're totally not interested in this kind of stuff. Okay. <clears throat> um, let, let's, let's, uh, 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 um, let's compare now what I did was I just put some parameters in here. I said we start with a base value. This could be base value. It could be the weather. It could be wind. It could be uh, oil prices, whatever. Okay? Now, I, I, and then we start with a random number. Okay? And then we take a normal distribution against that random number. And just if you... It, you, you know, it, it, if you can't remember some of this stuff, which I can never really do, if I have a volatility, remember, now volatility, annual volatility, which is the STD V of returns, not of, or, 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 or the STD of growth. Okay, everything in finance and economics comes down to the fact that returns are the growth rate. And so we don't take the standard deviation of the price itself. We take the standard deviation of the rate of return in price. That's why you compute uh, uh, volatility e equals uh, 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 price change. If we do it on a continual basis... It's equal to ln of p t divided by how about I put p t divided by p t minus one and then s t vol equal s t d e v of price change and and the price changes are t one two three four five and all that so this volatility is the change. Now, if we imagine we have a stock of 10 with a 10% volatility, and we say, well, we expect the, the stock price to go up on average by 4% because they're making investments and their, their company's going to be able to pay more dividends and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Then we can put this these things, and I, what I do is, I when I ever do this, the, the, the probability of getting four standard deviations, four minus 40% when it's normally distributed would be almost impossible. And I'm going to use normal distribution for these ones. I'm going to make a whole series of vi uh, um, uh, 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 videos, and we can put a, a Weibull distribution in and put some some longer tails in and change it and do the same thing. I'm going to show you in Excel how you can do that. So, you know, you don't have to go to the statistics textbooks, but just to remember how this works, if you put minus four and then go to positive four to have a normal distribution that's 
40%, uh, uh, so actually it's minus 36 because it's 4, to have it uh, go down by 30% would be almost zero. Now, we know that stocks can change a lot more than that, so we know that they're probably not normally distributed, and that's what we'll check, and we'll do some future analysis of that. But that's a good place to start. And then we can say, well, okay, if it's four standard deviations away, we take this 10% which is the standard deviation of the return. And this time I'm going to, uh, 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 since it's minus, I'm going to multiply that by minus four, and then I add the 4%. And then we can get a, if we just put in Excel what the normal distribution is, and we put a little one here so it's cumulative, we can get that the the probability of that is basically zero. The probability of this is 0.1%. When we get up to 1%, it's about 2.25 distributions away from the mean. So there's a 1% chance, that, or 1.22% chance, that it will be 18.5% or lower. And then we go down to the, the, the one standard deviation away from the mean, which is minus 6%. So everything's working with a return up to 14%. So you can take this block here from 1 to minus 1, and that gives you 84% chance of being below 1, 15.8% of being above 1, and you get the classic issue that you've got about 60% chance of being above the mean or below the mean. So when you discuss volatility, you can say, well, you can discuss it in terms of growth rates or returns. And, and, and what's the, the, you can say, if, if we've got an expected return of zero, uh, then we can say 10% uh, uh, above or 10% below, there's 16%, 68% of being between that. And if we put a 20% volatility in, and all I've done is graph that, it doesn't mean really much, uh, uh, then you get the biggest, the, the bigger uh, uh, chances. Okay? Enough of that. I, other people are better at making this, this kind of crap. Okay, now the other thing we can, so, so then we put in this volatility. Uh, so what we do is we say, okay, once we have a random number, it's, it's as if we're starting with this probability, this probability here. You give me a probability, and then instead of, of, uh, of uh, 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 me putting a number in and giving you the probability, I give you this probability, which you notice it's between uh, 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 this, well, let's do it with a cumulative. It's between 0 and 1 this cumulative normal, I'll give you this probability, I'll give you some number here, and I'll, then you tell me how many standard deviations away from the mean it is. So I start with this, the random number happens to go between 0 and 1, and then we can put a normal, a standard inverse, and, and that gives us the, the, the it, it, it gives us the, 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 the standard deviations away from the mean. Okay, this should be S T D D E V away from mean. Okay, so if we, we if we ever had a minus four or plus four, this is a really very low probability event. This random number gave you almost zero, and this was a really really high. This is a bizarre one where it went down and then back up, and there's no. I don't think there's any special, uh, there better not be any, any special thing in Excel where if you, they're, they're, they're independent. Okay, I couldn't get that word out. All right, now once you have that, then you can multiply this by the volatility, kind of like I did in that other sheet. Okay, and then we can, uh, 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 that gives you the, 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 the multiplied by volatility, and that gives you the percent change in price okay and that's if there's no mean reversion now one if there's no mean reversion we can do this whole business we could either take the last price and multiply it by one plus the uh, uh, change or 
notice it's supposed to change, or we can say, no, no, it's th that, that, that last one assumes that the price change occurs at the very end of the period. But instead, we can say, no, 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 let's make it a continual price change. So let's raise that, we, we take the last price, in this case, this number, and we raise it, we, we take e to the percent change, and that gives us the discrete versus the uh, 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 whatever, uh, continuous. And then we can perhaps press uh, um, Alt F1, right? So I've got to press function and Alt and F1. And then we can look at our, our, our uh, the, I'm going to call this our, our Brownian uh, motion, okay? It's interesting how the, there, there was a bigger, much bigger difference. And I'm, I'm going to put it, how about, we, to, instead of being, uh, fuck, sorry. No mean reversion. Okay, and then, uh, uh, I, I guess on this one I have to, uh, if I, I if I calculate this, uh, okay, and uh, control F one. It's interesting how how that difference in discrete versus uh, 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 continual made more of a difference as 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 you go out, okay, and. I'm going to use the continual more than the discrete, uh, but really, we'll, we'll show you that the use of the discrete versus the nominal. We're, we're going to show you that if you compute volatility with the ln, you should use the continual distribution, and when you compute the standard deviation, you should use STDS. I didn't know that, and I didn't write read any of the books about that, and how could I remember that? If you use the discrete, you should again use the sample standard deviation. I'm going to prove exactly what I did for all of this stuff in just a minute. Okay, so that's, that's a, a, a Brownian motion. I think maybe we can stick it over here okay and then now we can we can look at mean reversion and and the mean reversion when you make a mean reversion here's the big deal uh, uh, this is the discrete part okay the first thing is i put one uh, 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 where, where's a four i put d4 and then we always start with the mean and the mean in this case was 100. And we could change that mean over time if there's global warming, and the, which there is, I'm sorry, with global warming, if the temperature increases over time and you want to make a kind of prediction of the range in the temperature, you could have a trend line going up and just instead of going to one single value, go to a, a trend line. We'll, take, we'll, we'll discuss that in, a, in, a, in another video. Okay, and there's some kind of Ostrolek Ostrova thing that this is called. Okay, and this so right now I have a hundred percent mean reversion, and when the the price goes up, it tends to come down and all that. And I could also do this with our disc uh, 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 continual. We just take our volatility and raise it to the power and then put our mean reversion factor in and this one uh, this is all the related to the to the basic kind of volatility in the in the discrete method okay and then we can do the same sort of thing and let, let's look at this and uh, okay i hope i don't screw up on this one ah, not so bad Okay, and, and this one's mean reverting. Okay, and uh, uh, this one now, it would have been nice if I kind of made the scales the same, but I'm not going to. Uh, maybe 
the size of that graph is about the same, which doesn't mean a damn thing. Um, so you can let let's just kind of take some other samples, and and that's that's the start. And again, this if you don't define your time series, this is too obvious to 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 say almost. If you don't define your time series carefully and don't understand whether you have a mean reverting series or not, this is 160, the scale, and this is 250. You can see that this, this is, in terms of banking, this is so much safer. In terms of a stock, it would be so much boring. In this case, it went way down to zero. In the other case, and remember, I'm using exactly the same random number up here. Okay, I'm not I'm not kind of cheating. Well, that is whatever. I don't know. And then you you get different. Now, I I don't know if the volatility from period to period is different, and and we'll look at that. But the volatility over time again. This is three fifty versus two hundred. Okay, so you can do that mean reverting, and then eventually. We're going to say, okay, well, I want to understand what this mean reversion parameter is because it's so essential. How can I get this mean reversion parameter? I don't understand how you could even try to do any Monte Carlo simulation whatsoever unless you understood a mean reverting series versus a non-mean reverting series. And I don't practice it, so I'm not out here trading or... God no, money for that. Uh, I I I don't do anything like that. But uh, that's that. Now, if you let's let's just look at the the, the first thing I did. So if if I take up here, we'll take the uh, uh, standard deviation of the 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 log. This time, it's not. This is the output. This is the percent change in price from the prices. And then this is the one with uh, 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 this, excuse me, continual. And oh, this, excuse me, oh, this is the log. This is discrete. And then so, so the percent changes are a little bit different just because of the assumption that you, the, the change happens right at the end and then we can take the standard deviation of the one and the, the standard deviation for the whole population and then we can take the 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 the, the standard deviation of the second and then we can also uh, um, th this is all for the the uh, 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 this is all for the uh, continual series. This is continual. And then we'll do the same thing for the discrete. We'll, we'll take the percent change. And again, these don't have any mean reversions in them yet. And then we'll do that again. Then after we get these standard deviations, and of course, I shouldn't, oh, I had some graphs down there. Uh, 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 when we every, every time we do a new little calculation, we get a different standard deviation. Then we can take our now, why is this? Oh, this is the variance. Excuse me, I kept on saying standard deviation and it's the variance. Sorry about that. And, and the standard deviation would be this uh, uh, squared, okay. Now, this to the square root, sorry. Okay, and, and so we, this time I get 12%, then I get 25%, 22%, 21%, 26%, 16%, 23%, and I do it again and again, and I want to see something really basic. I want to make sure that the standard deviation I input, which is this volatility I input, which goes to the to this thing i should have been a little more clear on this one this volatility that i input is on average which is it which one of these four is it is it the should i use the population should i use the, the discrete 
should I use? Which is the one is the log? Which one should I use? So we do this, and then we 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 get uh, 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 now. What I did here is I said let's do a forty thousand simulations. Now when I don't have this, you're not gonna perhaps believe me, but when I don't have this video switched on if i click on this and it'll go through 40 40 thousand uh, uh, deviations and up here uh uh i said well where's the 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 uh, excuse me let's this this just prints out these the all of these one two three four one two three four and each one of these has a little range name, volatility 1, volatility 1A, volatility 2, volatility 2A, uh, th uh, 3, so there are 4 times uh, uh, 2 is 8, so there are 8 variables, and then you, you, you make a little macro, and this time, you gotta, if you're a little bit more careful, the, the biggest thing you can do in all of this is make this application screen updating faults. That's almost too obvious to say. But if you, and then I, I, I delete this, and I make a new range name, and when I do this, I make a, 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 I make a dimension on this output range, which is all of these numbers. So I want to be able to change this from 40,000 to 60,000, and I want to get all of these together. Okay. And, oh, let's make it. God, let's make it 80,000. I'm going to have to switch the uh, thing off when I do that. Okay, I want to make it so we can do enormous kind of simulations like this to be really careful. And what you do is you make this output range, and then you, 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 you make this into a variable so you don't write out all of these 80,000 at the same time. That's the big deal. So you make... you. Re Put this thing called redim. You got to make this as a variant. I kept on getting that wrong, and then you do a redimension and this range simulations. Well, that's just this eighty thousand over here, okay? And after you do that, then it's going to go around for this eighty thousand, this range simulations, and then the big trick is after you're finished, it's not writing anything out, and it's going to write them out out in one go right here. And that's a lot faster, a heck of a lot faster. The slowest thing you could do is write them all out. This really slow thing is to turn the updating uh, 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 application updating off. So, so what we do here is we click on this simulate, and then it should take not very long. Now it took actually. Touch longer than I thought it would. <clears throat> uh, the and note that this with eighty thousand, we get exactly the twenty percent that we input. We get, uh, but it doesn't. If if we use a continual time series and use the variance of the the, the variance of the sample, if we use the variance of the population, it doesn't give us quite the the same thing. Uh, uh, then we can, uh, 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 on this one, we can use the, the uh, 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 if it was a di continual and we used the discrete, eh, it doesn't give us exactly. This kind of gave us, this is kind of interesting. We used a population and we got something. But really, it's this one. Okay, it's this one that's the good one. And down here, if we use a discrete time series we should input a so so this one should be we should compute vol vol, vol with with the with with the the uh, 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 p1 p t t divided by p t minus one minus minus one and and that that's but if we go over here and have a continual time series, we should put the log, oops, oh shoot, we, we should put the, 
the log ln. So remember that the Now, I, I don't know, maybe you can find this in a statistics book, but I remember looking at statistics and I'm doing, I worked on this for years and I never oh, had so many statistics books and I, with the stuff I really wanted to know, I could never find properly. Okay, maybe, good. But it proves to, I hope this theme about trying to demonstrate things yourself getting in the sandbox yourself, not just trusting some app, doing it yourself and justifying it by yourself. So again, just to reemphasize, if we have a series with EXP, then we should compute the, the, the standard deviation with this method. If we have a series where we take the last time, a period times one plus the change, if that's how we're doing our simulation, then when we compute volatility, we should get this. And with our Monte Carlo simulation, we've been able to demonstrate what happens. And I'm now, God, I wanted to use Monte Carlo simulation. And what the hell did I do over here? I, I, I did some kind of frequency thing, right? And this frequency was the, I don't know why I took that one. Uh, okay, let, let's take and put this one in. Put this one in. And did I take enough? I didn't. I'm sure I didn't take all that. Oh, let's do it again. You, you take to get the frequency. You put equal frequency. And and look at me. I'm I'm really. I've got some kind of psychological problems because I can't finish a thought. We take this one. And then I, I kind of did a little increment where I say, well, well what's the average? Average of, of this is the average of the, the variance, not the standard deviation. And then we put in our bins and, and then we get a little distribution, which is not, well, this is, this is kind of normal. We have some really extreme thing on the, the max, you, you know, the, this max is kind of really too high, but what, whatever. Uh, um, uh, 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 we get this, and perhaps if we did this with the standard deviation, it would be different. So let's leave that, okay? Um, good, okay? I hope I've convinced you of that, okay? And then, now the next thing I did, which is, again, I, I've, I've already introduced. We've gone through that sheet. On this sheet, what I did is I said, okay, well, let's do something a little bit different, Let's, now that we understand that if we're taking a continual series, we should use the log, and let's take the percent, the, let's take the, 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 just the, this price divide, uh, the log of the, the, the percent change, let's do it, maybe this one, and we're always comparing it to the original price, and let's see, basically, this gives us the variance, because we're taking the, 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 percent change and we're squaring it and on average the percent change in this series would be zero i don't have any trends i don't have anything going up it's just a simple kind of time series we can put trends in we can put minimum and maximum boundaries in and we can do all sorts of things later but right now let's just get this right so i have the percent change in this price versus this one and then we go all the way out, okay, and then, <clears throat> and this, uh, again, remember, this one is, is, is a, 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 no non-mean reversion, a Brownian motion thing, okay? And then this, so this time I uh, did this. Now, let me just see if I can do something. So, so we did the same sort of thing. We have to define a range name, and I show it to you. I had a little more problem with this, and we put we call this output one. And uh, this is range simulations one, row start one. This is all okay, okay. And so we go around and around, and we we put these things in this, and then we stick it all in this range called output one. Okay, and I'm this time I'm not going to do it because I've talked about it. I did forty thousand 
simulations, maybe I should have done 80,000. 80,000 seemed to work a little bit better. Maybe we would have a little bit of a, a better output. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to totally contradict myself and do it. Okay. Okay, with 80,000, it didn't change much. I was really hoping this would be exactly two, exactly three, exactly four. But it's pretty close. It's, it's pretty close, and this is, remember, this is the standard deviation of time. And I tried this with the median. So I took the median variance and compared this to this one and, and took the, the median, the average, uh, 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 remember, it was the, uh, the, 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 the percent change expressed as a log squared. You remember, so this is basically the variance. And... Hmm, maybe this is why. Is this, is this a little bit off? I can't believe that that would make any difference. Hmm. But I'll do this anyway. Okay. And we were just taking black numbers anyway, so... And I hope I go, I go to E1006. E1... Well, Maybe I, did I take them all? Just a minute. Let's put another zero in there. I'm not very good at this. I think that might have changed things a little. Ah, it did. Mm, look at this. Ah, very good. Ah, how exciting. And then I better, for the median, I, I think I already put them in, but I, you know, but let's do this. I think I, I already have the extra zero in there. Oops, okay. uh, maybe I can't do any more. Okay, all right. So the, the, this, again, this is very close to the median. And, and we demonstrated this crucial point that as you go further out, the variance increases and it increases in the variance, not the standard deviation, increases directly in proportion to how many years there are. So you, that's, that's why you have to take this famous uh, formula, which is the uh, uh, volatility, at, at, we'll, we'll put annual uh, uh, volatility equals period volatility. So if you had a day... A, 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 a day by day, you'd multiply it by the square root of the, 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 the square, square, uh, uh, the square root of the time period, uh, 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 periods in year. How's that? Okay, so th that's where this comes from. For me, I always wanted to know this. Isn't this about the most exciting thing you can ever imagine? Now, we're going to do the same thing now. And, and I think this is what I was kind of checking. This, this is a, 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 a variant, a, a no mean MR variance with time. Okay, and then let's do the next one, which is mean reversion with uh, mean reversion variance with time. And then let's do the final one, which is 50% MR. Can I put percent like that? Variance with time. Can I, I, can I do a percent sign? I guess I can. Okay, so we're going to do three different scenarios, and then we're going to try to it, it, see. Okay, well, if the 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 variance doesn't go up with time, and we'll see this with oil prices and and and, and weather and temperatures, that, that there's no increase in variance over time. If you take uh, uh, one year, the, the average of the one-year prices, I've got an, another video on that. We're going to do it all with real time series. We'll see that there's no increase in o over time. It, it, it just, if you take 
uh, uh, go back to the 1890s where you can find this this uh, climate data and you say okay let's take the average of the five years versus the one year the the average of the it, 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 the average of the five years doesn't go down relative to the one year whatever I'm, 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 I, I, I'm not getting it out exactly right but we'll do this in practice uh, uh, this is an introductory vi uh, a video. So if I want to do this, all I've got to do is first, let's make this one, instead of simulations one, let's, let's make it simulations three. How's that? Because, and let's call this simulations three. And then this row start, we'll put row How's that? And then we, we don't really need a column start. And so every, but everything will kind of be a three here. And then all we have to do is, is take this uh, uh, thing we did, uh, copy it. Okay. And I, I'm doing this, hopefully, uh, obviously for a reason. I want to show you uh, uh, how, how you can uh, make multiple uh, simulations in different sheets and all we do is change the row start to two and so it's it's making a range that goes about however many periods we want what we, we, we want it out and then i'll put this and and i was an idiot i, I remember we called it three not two okay and Okay, and, and then we, we, we have everything there, and then we put output uh, three, and then we put up here output three, and then we put output three, and then we put output three, and these ones now, we, and, and we, I, I, I realized what you have to do is calculate one little thing somewhere. Otherwise, it's that's like pressing the F9 button. So you just want to do it in as little space as possible, and, and you don't want to even calculate a whole sheet or anything else. And then these these range names, CH1 and all that, we're going to put them out. And then we better put this to be three as well. Okay, and. What it does is it, it deletes this, and then I hope I, uh, yeah, I guess when I delete this, everything clears out, which is good. And then we add the, we, we add the new name back in here, which could be 80,000 or 40,000, or what have you. And then we put all our range names in, and to get all our range names in, let's, oh, oops, oh, God. Uh, okay, the, the, this is the one I, I did with, just a moment, I hope I did it with this one. Oh, oh God, uh, um, just a minute, I, I let, let me pause. So, the, I don't know exactly where I left off, but let, now uh, uh, we're going to make a, a simulation okay and this time instead of using the non mean reverting series we'll use the mean reverting series okay and uh, uh, then we go to this one it's the same and I assume I can just copy this across so now these percent changes all come from the mean reverting series. And remember, this time I had a 100% mean reversion factor, and that 100% mean reversion factor just uh, 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 says that every time we have a change, we go back to that change, this thing, this, this variable here called D4. That's the it goes back by 100%, so it all, all goes back immediately. If we would have put in a, a, a 50%, let's put a 20%, and that 20 is too much, is the same, let's put a 30% mean reversion factor, or, or 
let's do zero. If it's zero, we get, I think, hopefully we'll get exactly the same as the, as the, oh God, I'm getting tired, as the, as, as the other one, okay? But if we put a, a, a 50, yeah, 50% Okay, then you can see that we're uh, uh, coming back. If you put a 100% mean reversion factor, uh, uh, what should happen is you come back much faster. It, it should stay, and again, the, the, I, I think I've got a kind of problem with the scale. Okay, so we're doing this with a 100% mean reversion factor. And then, now these, these things, if you see, they have a range name. They have a name and this range name now we're gonna we're gonna put this mean reversion factor and see what happens to this variance over time now what I'm going to do this time is instead of 40,000 I'll just do it with this so I made this one with simulation number four and hopefully it would all work so it says okay we're going to make this and of course I, I have some problems shoot I just uh, I had to delete the, the area. It, look at how fast it does 500 simulations. That's how fast it does it. Let's do uh, 3,000. Okay. And remember, this is the uh, uh, this is the 100% uh, simulation. And you can see we've got a little bit of variation, but there it's coming straight back to the mean. And it, it, it's kind of interesting here. I thought this might be different, but what we're getting a, 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 a variance. We're getting a, a, a standard deviation that's really pretty similar. I've only got 3,000. Did I do 3,000? You know, what you could do is, is, is keep redoing this and keep checking it. We're, we're getting close uh, uh, because now it, it's, it's getting close to exactly one. Okay? And that might be, well, okay, a little interesting. Uh, uh, and, 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 and I'm going to do it with, with much more, many more uh, simulations. And we can see that when we have 100% mean reversion, if we, so, so let's pretend that we had daily prices. And if there was 100% mean reversion, that means as you, as you, maybe it's weather, let's say it's daily temperatures. And that means as you, if you did this on a daily basis or this, uh, uh, or you you uh, 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 took the average over uh, or, or the period of a uh, the next month instead of the next day. You did this month by month instead of day by day. You would get the same measured standard deviation of the percent change. The standard deviation of the percent change as you as you go out further and further and further would stay the same. So in the next video, we'll try this with uh, oil prices, stock prices, and temperature. Those are my three examples. Oil prices, I mean, uh, stock prices should be close to Brownian motion or, or no mean reversion, maybe not. If there isn't, you theoretically could profit for, for, from trading. Uh, uh, temperature should be 100% mean reverting and uh, 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 the, the uh, oh god, the oil prices are somewhere in the middle. We'll, we'll show you all of that. I'm going to go through some some real data next. But let's do one more here, okay? And now I'm going to put again just 500 here. Now, right now it would it it, it would do the same thing. This is simulate number four. Uh, no, simulate number three, excuse me. And uh, let me fix the error I made before, and that's just saying, well, this, this thing called output number three 
doesn't exist. So what we might have to do is put on error. And this is one of the worst things about VBA is that, that on error for me is a dangerous kind of thing to, to use. And, and then it, it does it. I didn't clear out. I didn't clear it out before. So let's do it and, and make a 500 simulations. And, and you get the same sort of thing. Let's do it again, 500 simulations. And then it's not producing very similar results. That's what I mean by just, again, instead of trying to do some fancy mathematics on this, how many simulations do you really need if you just keep doing this again and again? And that's why this method that I, 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 I put it all on the website, by the way, this file, so you can use that VBA code and that VBA, that little, it's not a lot of, it's not a lot of code. But now let's, so now I'm going to, I'm going to once again, for the last time, pause the video. I'm going to make the, duh, should we make 80,000? Why not? We'll make 80,000 and we'll, uh, 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 on this one, this is, the, for me, the last one is the really more interesting one. Now I'm going to put in a, 50% mean reversion. Okay, we'll just do it first with a couple of things. And then with 50% mean reversion here, we'll look and see what happens. Okay. Uh, uh, I've got 3,000. And you can see that there is some increase in the first a, a, a few years and then it's kind of interesting it all stabilizes so that we can use this idea let let let's put uh, let's put 30 percent mean reversion and let's see how long it takes to stabilize them okay and I, i'm i'm looking at these ones down here so eventually it was all kind of stabilizing and this time it, it, it takes longer. We could almost draw a little, uh, 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 draw a little graph. And if we, let, let's just uh, press a function alter on F1. Okay. And we can, if, if in the observed series, the volatility is is evening out. We can kind of look at this and pick out for fifty percent mean. If if we have the volatility leveling out, do we should we use? Does that imply fifty percent mean reversion, thirty percent mean reversion? We get this data. We we get this data and we essentially fit it. That's obviously a subject for the next. A, a kind of series, in fact, but I, I, I'm, I'm going to do this because I'm, I'm kind of excited about this. And, and, and maybe, you know, we don't really need, okay, we'll get a little bit of a smoother graph if we do this. Okay, and, and let's put the uh, uh, mean reversion in here. And let's, let's put what it is. So, uh, uh, again, I'm, when we look at the data, when we look at the data and compute the volatility, if the volatility straight away, it doesn't increase as you make a, a longer series. If it doesn't increase, you can say, okay, there's a 100% mean reversion. If it directly increases with the time period, when we did this, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, when, when we have twice as many time periods, if you go out two time periods, does the volatility go up by two? Then you can say there's Brownian motion, an in-between. We can now back into this mean reversion factor, and we don't have to use this, this ridiculous thing that this augmented Dickey Fuller test. I've got a bunch of stuff like this, but why, why people, you know, you know uh, you can get the answers. You can get the answers from Excel these days. You, this is the, the 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 real key. So let's let's put only ten percent mean reversion. 
Okay, if we only put 10% mean reversion in here, and let's let's maybe make it uh, uh, let's let's make it mm, seven thousand. Oh, uh, 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 maybe it won't be so slow there. And let's uh, uh, simulate that. Okay, is it how long is it taking? Now it's taking a little bit longer. Shoot. Uh, okay, and 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 we could compare this. Let, let, let's let's do this. Let's compare the the no the the one with no mean reversion to that. So remember, I think I took this this kind of series. Okay, I can't remember exactly. I hope I did. Okay, and let's we can uh, let's cut this. Uh, it, it says fifty percent mean reversion. Of course, it's not. Uh, and and I, I'm I'm really excited about this. We it, it, we can back in to the mean reversion, and right now we we, we let me for once uh, uh, put the scale. <sighs> oh, what should I do? Does this one do it? No. Uh, where, where's the stupid thing? Oh, God. Come on. Ah, oh, come on. I just want the scale. Okay, all I want to do is format the axis and put the, the top the top at four. Okay? All right, so, so we can... Th there's our, even with pretty small mean reversion... Even this this mean reversion was only ten percent. We're getting, you know, a very very different uh, pattern. We're getting a very very different pattern. I, I, I'm going to put this. I'm going to make this twenty percent mean reversion and, and, and do it for, you know, the fifty thousand periods. Okay, it's it 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 should show you that it, it it's very dangerous. To assume a, just a, a a Brownian motion for series, this is a, a no mean reversion. I think uh, that's enough of this. The, the only thing I'll do is I'll switch this video off and, and do the, the the more detailed ones of twenty percent, and then show you that. And then the file will be on the website. Okay. Okay, this is the end. The real end. So with 20% mean reversion, when you go, when, when you take the variance just from one period to the next, uh, we get our, we, we get our 20% mean reversion. Oh, sorry, yes. When we take it from, or this is the square root, excuse me, okay, that's our volatility. And it's not exactly the same as the volatility in the case with no mean reversion, which came very, very close to 20%. I, I get a little bit higher of a number. Uh, uh, we, we'll, we'll deal with that when we, when we look at the, the, the real data, okay? The... But then, as you go to the first period, there's a a a, a, a one point two eight percent, the twenty eight percent increase, whereas the I haven't finished the, this one. The, there was a forty two percent increase. Okay, that's not a big deal. But but and then you get to the second one. There's a forty two percent increase. Versus a 74, and then you get 150, and then it, it completely stabilizes. So we have to look at the data. When we look at stock price data, and, and we're dealing with either daily data or monthly data, we have to see if the variance keeps increasing over time, uh, or... Uh, 
or whether it stabilizes. Okay, and I'm going to, I haven't done it yet. It's just an idea right now. And uh, I'll make another video on that after I make a couple of the other ones on levelized cost. On, 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 uh, 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 the, uh, circular references on uh, large models, uh, on reading data, and a bunch of other.